Our guest today makes body parts. He's not a doctor. What he does could be earning him millions, actually, in Hollywood. However, Robert Barron helps people disfigured by cancer or fire or birth defects. In his lab, he creates ears, noses, eyes, all sorts of body parts. And when he was with the CIA, Robert used this skill to disguise secret agents whose lives were on the line. But today, instead of concealing identities, he's giving people back their identities. This is a man with a fascinating job and even more so a fascinating story. Please welcome Robert Barron. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The pictures are, are powerful. They're kind of eerie. I mean, when somebody comes up to you and says, Bob, Robert, what do you do for a living? What do you say? Well, it's very difficult at times to say what I really do because when I was in the agency, I couldn't say anything of what I did. You mean the CIA when oh, you were there? Yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, I, uh, I make a difference in people's lives. And that's probably the most wonderful feeling that a person can encounter. You build faces. Is there anything you can't build on somebody's face? No, there isn't. Nothing? Nothing. So Kent could walk out of the room looking like Kent and come back in the room looking like Tom Cruise? Yes. We'd like that. <laughs> Please! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Jesse. No, I, I made doubles and uh, made doubles? changed people's identities um, all the time in the agency. Because so you could have a duplicate, a com Absolutely. identical. Absolutely. Jesse yeah. in the audience with a question. Go ahead, Jesse. What's the most bizarre um, disguise you use in the CIA? That you can tell us about without well, having to kill us. If I, yeah, <laughs> if I told you that, I'd have to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, making identities is uh, very, very difficult and uh, time consuming. But uh, changing someone's identity had to be done because if I had to protect you out there, you had to go out there and collect intelligence from the opposition. You better be disguised in the proper way and you're not going to be attracting attention you have to distract attention and you have to pass the closest of scrutiny like six inches you could talk to someone right here and you wouldn't be able to tell that you had a full face on that's how good it had to be so agents lives depended upon the realism and the perfection of their disguise to keep them alive Kirsten has a good question yes um, what inspired you to change from the CIA to what you're doing now? If I could put someone in hiding, then I could bring someone out of hiding with uh, prosthetic devices. Or if I could change someone's identity, then I could give someone their identity back, you know, with, with prosthetic devices. And, and the challenge of, of changing someone's identity was always there. But the challenge now is to give some someone back the quality of life that they were used to before their differences. And what a difference you made for a Pakistani woman. Who's, Zahida? Oh my yeah. goodness. This, yeah. I, I, I just want to warn you because some of these shots are pretty disturbing, but the story is so powerful it's worth telling. Explain what her husband did to her. Uh, Zahida, I, I learned about Zahida through um, uh, the National Geographics. And um, her husband claims that he saw her mm. looking at another man. He cut her ears off, cut her nose off, gouged her eyes out, cut half her tongue out, and hung her upside down, upside down to die, and she was six months pregnant. So when the first time I saw her, she was 86 pounds, and she wasn't expected to live at all. And uh, a team, not just myself, but I got a team of doctors together, and we worked on her for four months without any payment whatsoever. I'm looking at this, and I noticed the audience gasped a little bit when we saw that. I mean, how hard was it for you to work on her? I mean, we just seen the picture. She couldn't speak any English, and uh, she always had a smile on her face. And, and After we knew all that, that we, happened to her? Yeah. We knew that we had to get her back to Pakistan so her, her, her family and her kids could accept her. We because couldn't that, give her back mm -hmm. her, her eyesight, but we could get her back where her kids would accept her, and that's all she wanted to do. And she went back, and she had a smile on her face when she left so us. So many doctors worked on her, oh, and you, you worked so hard to create a new look, a new face for her. And like you were saying, one of the things is she wanted this done for her children so they wouldn't be right. embarrassed right. about their mother. Let's watch this. 
Our tissue is very Dr. Thin. Singer and Baron join Dr. Dufresne in the operating room. Dufresne is cleaning up Zahida's wounds and implanting Dr. Singer's titanium devices, anchors, you might call them. Yeah, that, sh that should be far enough, don't you think? So Baron's new silicone creations will fit seamlessly onto her face. Instead of two years of plastic surgery, with plastic surgery plus prosthetics, how long will it take? Probably about uh, three to four months. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And she will go back in the situation where she can comfortably reintegrate herself into society? I or will so. she still look to me deformed? No, she will not look deformed. She will look, she will look very good, very normal. Insurance would normally cover most of the cost for the surgery and prosthetics, but Zahida is a special case. She does not have any money to pay for any of this, which is why Baron, Singer, and Dufresne donated their time and talent. Were you happy with what ended up happening? Very happy. I was very happy to see the results of a, of a woman that was near death to, to walk away with a smile on her face. I don't think I could have walked away with a smile on my face, but she had the spirit, she had the, the courage to go back, and that's all she wanted to do, was to go back with her kids. Her, her brother found her and cut her down. Mm. Her brother found her. And Dr. Dufresne operated on her for six hours, six hours. We and should I see what kind of a difference you made. Let's look. It's a heat of before. Here she is without her eyes, without her nose, without her ears. And let's look at how she looked after. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Thank you. She was a beautiful, a beautiful woman before, but what a difference you made for her. And how sad that she could not see what a difference you made, but she oh, knows it in her heart, doesn't absolutely she? Absolutely, she does. There's a little boy here today um, who you're going to make a difference in his life, right on our show. <laughs> Tell us about Patrick's situation. Patrick's uh, mom and dad um, saw me in uh, Reader's Digest, and uh, they asked me, they, they called me and asked me if uh, I could possibly uh, design and fabricate a prosthetic ear to go over the botched ear reconstructive surgery that, that he had. And uh, I said, yes, I can. And ear reconstructive surgery is, it should be abolished. Um, I don't believe in it. Um, the outcome always falls short of everyone's expectation. And it just shouldn't, shouldn't happen anymore. Well, you got a chance to work on him. He has not seen this you yet. You know what? We've we got to take a commercial break. It. They've not seen it, but his ear is it's right in, in here. Box. And Patrick's going to get his ear in a moment. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is a little girl named Brittany, and Brittany did not have an ear. So Brittany was the subject of so much teasing and taunting at school. And there you see Robert Barron who used to make disguises for the CIA, making a prosthetic ear for Brittany. And it's not just this moment when she sees herself with an ear that's gonna change her life. As Robert will tell you, it's what happens in the days and the weeks to come that is so exciting for these children. And we're about to see that unfold <laughs> for Patrick. Patrick is here with his mom, Nancy. And Patrick, how jazzed are you about what's about to happen? Mm -hmm. You're pretty excited? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How long have you been waiting and wanting to get an ear? Well, I've been wanting for a few years. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal, huh? Were you a little worried about going into this, or you thought, nah, this is something I want to do? Uh, a little bit in the middle. Can in you the turn middle? Yeah. Can you turn, look toward me so yeah. I can Nancy. see? Nancy. And, Nancy. and describe yeah. what I'm looking at, Nancy. What What? happened here. This is the result, uh, the final result after two outer ear reconstructive surgeries. He was born with a lot less than this. Uh -huh. um, he had just a little bit of a ridge. Um, and in order to construct this, they had to take cartilage from his rib. So he, he had a big incision. Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, scars on your stomach now too? Yeah, mm -hmm. he does. And Again, this was the result of two surgeries, and they were quite extensive. You know, they, it's not just you add on to the skin. They fold the skin clear back, and you, it's just quite a bit of work involved with doing this. And are, you, are you in fifth grade now? How, what, 
grade are um, you in? I'm in fifth grade. You're in fifth grade. Tell me about what happens at school. What kind of, do you get teased, have you, um, for a long time? No, but what does go on when some kids that haven't seen me, they ask me what happened to my ear. Mm -hmm. I tell them it was born like this, and I went through three surgeries. Your mm -hmm. friends are good with it, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Robert, when you hear this story about the surgeries and things, you're, you got sort of tense there. Does it just make you mad? Oh, it sure does. I mean, the outcome always falls short. And uh, if, you know, doctors, if it were on a personal level, would you operate on your own, knowing that the outcome is always going to fall short of everyone's expectation? Mm -hmm. That's what I ask, you know? And it's not fair. The problems aren't solved. They, they escalate. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, the what's, surgery, what's uh, meeting this man mean to you? Oh, it's fantastic. Had I known him before the surgeries even started, we would have skipped the surgeries entirely. Really? Yes. Did this give hope? Look at did Patrick you going, you bet we would have skipped <laughs> those surgeries. Did you right away have hope from. when you met Robert? Oh, yes. Um, the article in the Reader's Digest was about a young boy or teenager who had the exact same problem as Patrick. And so it, was just, it wasn't a nose, it was an ear mm -hmm. problem. And I just thought, oh, this is the answer to everything that we've been wanting. What has it done to you as a mom watching what he's gone through without oh, an ear? It's, it's been, he's been real good with his friends. His friends have been real good about it. But there are always questions. We walk through the grocery store and people start to stare. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're wondering. It's just natural. But I want him to be able to play without that being the identifying characteristic mm -hmm. instead of saying the boy with the brown hair or the boy with one ear. You know, I don't want that to be what he's identified. Tana's with. got a question in the audience. Go ahead, Tana. Uh, yeah, I was wondering how long did it take for you to reconstruct his ear? How long uh, did it take? It all depends on the com complexity. Uh, it takes anywhere from three weeks to two months. And you're just baking, making it from scratch, you're building, well, making mo no, molds I, and that kind of thing? I reversed the image. I sculpt a reversed image. I take an impression of the normal ear, and with clay, I put a piece of clay next to a stone ear, which is his normal ear, mm -hmm. and then sculpt a reversed image. So I'll get the exact mm -hmm. ear. Mm -hmm. And then I turn that mold into a silicone mold, and then I tin it to match the surrounding tissue. But in Patrick's case, I have to make a covering to look like an ear. And that's the hardest thing to do after the attempted surgery, a botched uh, ear reconstructive mm -hmm. surgery, is performed, as you can see, you know. Uh, but I would much rather start with my crochet. My crochet is the defective ear that you'll see uh, just in a little while with uh, Jack. Well, Jack is a little boy in our audience mm -hmm. who can give Patrick even more hope because Jack Jack's waving over has gone Jack. through this <laughs> and he ha he's living with the results of, of Robert's work, aren't you, Jack? <laughs> and he's very excited to share some of that in just a moment. And Patrick, we need to take a commercial break, but when we come back, that ear that you've been waiting 11 years to get, big guy, is sitting right here. Guess what? Hey. And you're going to get it right after this break, okay? You excited? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. Very excited. Robert Barron builds new faces. Take a look at this before shot. After his work, his prosthetics are put on, and you get a completely different look. A man with an ear who didn't have one before. And Robert started this in the CIA, actually, was doing disguises, then decided to help people. Here's an eye. And then, after Robert's work, wow. can't tell the difference. And you had for the CIA to do it so that up close people couldn't recognize an agent, otherwise you'd be in big trouble. How, how did you, I understand there was some sort of parking ticket that got you into this line of work in the CIA, is that true? Oh, yeah, I'd rather not do it. No, 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 what happened, what did you do? Oh, I was at the State Department and, uh, I mean, uh, the Pentagon, and uh, I didn't uh, enjoy parking about 15 minutes away, so uh, I forged a uh, parking sticker so I could park where the generals park and the admirals park and everything. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know. So obviously I mean, you I were did good. I on my lunch hour, so I wasn't really doing anything wrong, right? So did somebody look into that and go, if this guy could do this, we could use him in the CIA? I think that's what happened. I don't have <laughs> proof of that, but the judge, I think, knew someone in the CIA and said, hey, you know, this guy's a good forger. What do you mean he the judge? Gonna... So you had to go before a judge yes, with this forgery? You and what did the judge you. say when he saw the forged parking pass? Well, I know that he could, he could have put me in jail and thrown the key away, but he was so set back that he only fought, fined me $50 and, and told me to get out of his court. Thought you did a good job. But uh, <laughs> then he called me back. Once I got to the door, he called me back and he said, approach the bench. And I did. And he said, approach the bench. And I got that close to him. And he says, darn good job. <laughs> <laughs> and how this he became said, a career is amazing. Says, yeah, and he says, now I know where to go if I want to park close to the building so I won't have to walk through all this that This is the judge saying this, you know? oh, that's perfect. <laughs> but you've gone on, you went on to study with Hollywood artists who did the Planet of the Apes. You've learned so many different things on making disguises. Right. And now you have spent time developing an ear for Patrick. Patrick, who was born without an ear, and Patrick... We shouldn't really wait any much, much longer, should we, Patrick? This is probably very painful, isn't it? You want this done, don't you? Yeah. You excited? Oh, yeah. Now, oh, yeah. Now, this part isn't painful, right, for him, putting the ear on. No, so, no. So basically, you've made it, now you're going to attach the ears? That, and that's the, the little girls, you know, if they want their ear pierced, it doesn't even hurt. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you know? That's right. Oh, okay. Nice. You ready, Nance? I'm ready. ready? Okay, right. go ahead. Ready? ready? Okay. So here explain what go. you're going to do here. I'm going, I've already got the adhesive on the prostate device. So I'm going to put it in place, and then I'm going to press gently, and then this ear will stay in place all day. He'll take it off at night, and he'll be able to reapply it in the next morning before he goes to school. But this ear... You're going to be the hit of slumber parties, this, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this ear that I've designed is a covering to go over the ear reconstructive surgery. Can you see that? <gasps> look, yeah. he's seeing it yeah. for the first time. What do you think? Does that you look cool? Like yeah. yeah? Okay. okay so let's ready? try it on here. You ready, you Patrick? You ready, man? Yep. All right. Here this we go. This has got to be a lot less painful than that surgery was, here huh? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. no kidding. I want you to tilt your head just a little bit, and I'm going to get all the hair out of the way here, and I'm just going to put this in place. I'm going to wiggle it and jiggle it until it goes into place, and then I'm going to press down, and I'm going to... Push it just a little bit, just like that. All right? It doesn't hurt, does it? No. Okay. Hold still a minute. There. Let me push. Oh, Patrick, this wow. is so neat. There you go, guy. Oh. You want to see? You want, you want the mirror? Here, look at your mom first. Let Show your see. mom what you look like so she can see you. There we go. Wow. Looks like he was born with it. Tessany? Here, why don't you give her the mirror? What do you think? Good. Does yeah, it feel good. weird or anything? Does it feel kind of odd having it there? Um, uh, a bit. Yeah. yeah. Takes some getting used to. She'll get used to it. You know, yeah. and we should probably go to Jack because Jack can tell you what it's like to get used mm. to it. Now, Jack. Can I look at it again. Do you, are both, did Robert make both of your ears for you? Yes. Yes, he did. Were you yeah. born without ears, Jack? I was born without ears, but one ear on this side. Uh-huh. Only it was a small one. How much did you get teased at school before you got your new ears? You haven't 50 said. times. Really? <laughs> was it pretty rough at school? I heard you used to be shy and didn't want to go to school. Well, kind of. Yeah. Doesn't seem like you're too shy now, right? I'm, I'm not shy. <laughs> not anymore? Not shy anymore. No? Hey, Mom, talk about the difference, because Patrick is just getting this and we're looking at it, but it, describe the difference that came with time for Jack. Jack's always had a really outgoing personality. Yeah. I mean, he's always been this way, but I think the real benefit is, is um, just what Patrick's mom was saying, that that's not what people notice about him anymore. You know, they see him, and I think the greatest um, testimony to Bob's work is that they don't notice that they're prosthetics. His own pediatrician thought that um, it was his natural ear. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. He went to his own pediatrician? <laughs> yeah, his pediatrician he's had since he was six months old. Would he start to shoot the thing in the canal? Yeah, he started to, take to go and try to look in the ear, and I said, yeah, he still doesn't have an ear canal. <laughs> what made you go to Robert instead of the plastic surgery or things like that? 
Well, originally that's what you think is as a parent that you want something that's permanently attached, that's mm -hmm. going to be permanent. And then when I start to, to see what the results were, I was like, well, you know, that's not, not really what I want. And then you look for prosthetics and you type on the internet prosthesis and you find Bob immediately and the work that he's done and you just can't believe that it's a prosthetic. I mean, God has just given him such an amazing gift and that he chooses to use it this way is that's really a blessing. Hey, Jack, do you just... <laughs> Do you even do you even think about your ears now, or do you think about other stuff? Do you even, you even think about it anymore? Well, if I go up there. Oh, if you come up here, you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you will. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, how about a woman who's transformed by an eye that Robert made? We'll be right back. This is Robert Barron doing his job, which is making over people's faces, using prosthetics to take care of faces, This, in this case, creating a new eye for somebody. Just a short while ago, Patrick got a brand new ear and got it fit right on this show. And Patrick, you had a question during the break. So tell everybody what you were asking Robert during the break. Would this last through a roller coaster? <laughs> Whoa, that's a, that's a baited question. <laughs> yeah, you don't want your ear yeah. flying off on a roller well, coaster. You right? might want to, you know, kind of go like this. <laughs> How long will it last? It'll last um, anywhere from three to five years, depending on, upon the and As he grows, nature. you need another one as he grows and everything Ab else. Absolutely. His anatomy changes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've already had the sculpture. So his, when his anatomy changes, they have to come back so I can take an impression and make the anatomy, I mean, the back of the ear fit right. the anatomy. You did something Again. wonderful for Vicki Hemingway. Vicki's on the telephone with us. Vicki had Vicky. nasal carcinoma. Hi, hey. Vicki, you there? Hi, Vicki. Yes, I am. Hey, Robert. <laughs> now, Vicki, I understand you had seven surgeries, and doctors finally had to remove your nose. And yes. then Robert made an, a prosthetic nose for you. We're looking at the before uh, when you, after losing your nose and then the difference. Tell us about the difference mm -hmm. this made for you as a woman. Um, it, it changed my whole life. What Robert Barron done to me, he gave me a second chance out of life. And I'm self-confident when I go out in public now. And Did you, know, you hide before, Vicki? Yes, I did. Really? Yes. And now you go out and have a good time? You sound yes. positive. I, I, I'm myself now. What would you like to say to Robert, who's sitting here with us on our, on our set? Robert, I just can't thank you enough. My husband and I, you made my dreams come true. He answered my prayers that I prayed for every night that I would get a phone call, which I did, and that's the happiest day of my life. Yeah. You know, we should show you some of the other people that Robert has helped change. Look, take a look at some of these pictures. Here's a person who had lost an eye, a little girl, and look at the difference Robert made for this little girl. Wow. Here's another woman who lost an eye. And Robert, the master of disguise, worked wonders and made a huge difference for her. Here's a man who had lost an ear. And look what Robert did to change this man. Oh. Much like we just yeah. did with Patrick. And here's a, here's a hand. Here's a man who had look no hand there. And look what happened to this hand with prosthetics. Not just faces, but a completely new hand. As you watch this, Robert, how, how does it treat you. I, I Just listen to what Vicky said to you. What, what does that do for you? You almost started to tear up there for a second. At well, like. you know, I, I, patients become my best friends and it's just very gratifying for me to be able to help these people. And, you know, it could happen to any one of us at any time. And cancer is a horrible thing. But, you know, I'm just so thankful that I have the talent to be able to give back the quality of life that, that they were used to before their differences. It's just a, such a gratifying feeling. Do you still I, get hit up by the CIA to come back and help yeah. them out, or do you get asked by Hollywood to come and do a number for them? Maybe. Oh, oh he's not going to kill us, is he? He's not always the sly guy. You could, though, on, on a real sense, you could be making millions in, in Hollywood, couldn't you? Yes, I could. But you've decided not to, to do this? No, it, it's, you know, I'm helping people. And, and all of us help people in a certain way. And I just enjoy helping someone. And the good Lord gave me a gift. 
and I believe he's using me. He's going through me to help these people, and that's, and that's the way I'm serving him. We're so happy you Thank came you. here today and made a difference for Patrick. He's so excited. Thank you. Robert Barron, we'll be right back Thank with you. more of Broncos Afternoon.